Sorry, I'm a little bit late. Um, Ghostbusters already here. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to Office Hours with Chubb. Um, we're going to start off with my skincare routine because I just got out of the shower and I had to clean the shower afterwards. So that took up a little bit more time than I would have liked. And so I'm here. Um, I'm alive and I'm well. I hope you guys had a good week since the last time we spoke. Um, we're going to just get right into it. Let me get, let me get us up on the page so I can read comments. Um, but yeah, we're going to start off with my skincare routine. Um, it's a, com it's completely PR. I haven't paid for shit. Um, and I'm broke, so this is great. Um, okay, I have some little bit, of, I have a little bit of irritation there too. A little bit of irritation there, irritation here. Um, hey Mason, welcome back Mason. Team Takis. I was at an 11th year old birthday party last night and he received Takis as a present. And I thought to myself, oh my God, this is my opportunity to try Takis for the first time. But then he never opened the bag of chips, the bag of Takis. So I never got the Takis. Whatever. Um, so we're going to start off. Um, so we're doing my skincare routine right now. Please bear with me as I do it quickly. Um, and then we can get right into the chat for the night. Um, this is Ueda's Honeycomb Hydration Tonic that I got in PR. Ueda is a new brand to me. And so far, I'm loving the cleanser, the Honeycomb and Kojic Acid Cleanser. It is phenomenal. It feels very velvety and foamy, but not super drying. And of course, Kojic Acid has some um, some properties to do with hyperpigmentation. So I definitely use that in the shower. Um, the oil cleanser in the shower, I'm not the biggest fan of, but I think it's because I'm not a fan of oil cleansers. So I don't know why I got it. I don't like oil cleansers. So anyway, I'm a dummy. So I don't. That's not like my opinion on that cleanser. I don't know if that's an indicator of the quality of the product. I just have never tried an oil cleanser that I've actually really, really liked. So anyway, this is the hydration um, honeycomb tonic. Very simple formulation. There's aloe rose, um, there's manuka honey, there's hemp extract, glycerin. So it's just a very simple, very basic um, tonic. And we're just applying that to the face to add um, a texture on the skin that's going to help my other products to absorb better. Um, so what are we doing next? Oh, we're going in and I will, um, I will read comments after this routine. So bear with me. I will read the comments. I'll go back. I'll scroll up and I'll read comments. The second product that I'm going to go in with is the Paula's Choice Triple Active Total Repair Serum. This is actually um, a retinol, like a medium strength retinol um, combined with, well, no, I wouldn't say it's medium strength. It's like, I, I would say low to medium strength retinol. It has um, hexo resor, okay, oh my God, I cannot say this word. Hexi or hexo. Resorcino. Hexorezocino. Oh my god, that sounds so dumb. Um, but basically that's gonna really help to attack hyperpigmentation and discoloration. It also has 5% niacinamide. It has a retinoid in there as well. It's very gentle. Um, so we're gonna just apply a liberal amount of this. We're just applying a liberal amount. Okay. 
But then, we're actually gonna go in with my retin now um, that I love so much. It's the Allies of Skin uh, Retinol and Peptides um, Repair Night Cream. This has a very low concentration of retinol. And I'm at the stage, y'all, where I really truly believe in um, being able to use actives, like low strength actives on a very consistent, almost daily basis um, so that I get those benefits of the actives, but it's very gentle and not gonna disrupt and irritate my skin. And so that's why I really love this really gentle formulation. And the really cool thing about retinols is that they are yellow in color. I just love a little, I love a little bit of color, natural color that is, but I like a little bit of color. But this right now is going to really help to um, give you that really good dose of vitamin A without the irritation that you can sometimes see in retinols. So it's not going to be super duper drying. Um, it's also something you can use on your eyes. You see, I just did a little bit of pat there on the eyes. Again, it's that gentle. And this therein is the reason why I don't really use eye creams because I just apply a retinol on my eyes. What the fuck do I need an eye cream for, right? Okay. For those that wanna know why I have glowing, beautiful skin, this is one of the reasons. You don't have to do a skincare routine like this though, guys. Just so you know, you don't have to do, um, Guys, I'll get to the comments soon. I have um, three more products to use and then I will read the comments. Um, so after the retinol, I'm gonna go with the Molecular Barrier Recovery um, Cream Balm by Alice of Skin. This is a new product of mine and I have to say it's really nice. It's very smooth. It's very, um, very smooth and very moisturizing. I love it. I'm not sure if I would pay the money for this again because I do have another barrier cream that I am just in love with. I love the texture of it. And then what you're gonna see me do is you're gonna actually see me add the CE15 Bacuccio um, Firming Oil with this moisturizer. So this oil, I'm like fucking obsessed with it. Fucking obsessed with it. It has buckthorn, um, buckwheat, is it buckthorn? Buckthorn wheat or buckwheat thorn? I don't know. Oh, sea buckthorn. It has sea buckthorn in there, which gives it its yellow color. So if it, my skin looks a little bit yellow, it absorbs in. Don't worry about that. I would be wary if you are very, very um, fair if you have a very, very fair complexion, if you are looking out here like Casper the Gulf, then you may see a little bit of yellowing to the skin. Um, so you may wanna be aware of sea buckthorn in those cases. But for me, I'm already yellow. So it's no big deal for me. And you can kinda of see You can see like one face, I mean, boom. Oh, fuck me. Okay guys, we're almost ready to chat. Sorry, I'm so sorry. I just could not get to my routine early enough because I had to clean the shower tonight. I have this new fucking wand with a, like a motorized brush on the end of it that is just like fucking incredible. I love it so much. It's really, really nice. So we're just kind of rubbing everything in. Uh, Mason, thanks for stopping by. I hope you liked the stream. Before you go, I like the stream. It really helps to like and comment and do all those things. Like, I know YouTubers always tell you to do it, but we tell you to do it because it is so important to the health of our channels and to our growth on YouTube. So definitely like 
um, this live stream, if you like the stream. And we're gonna finish it off with a little bit of the Alex's skin. I have that much left, not that much left. But we're gonna finish it off with this lip balm. We are getting Bitch, we are using every last drop of this shit. Let me tell you. Yep, yeah, bitch. Every drop. In fact, I'm going to scoop this shit out because it's so good. This is my Holy Grail lip balm, by the way, guys. I've been through like three of these by now. I think three. This is my fourth. This is my fourth two. No, maybe it's my third two. It's my third two, but this this is the only lip balm I buy that I purchase. Period. It's very good. Okay, so that is my routine. I'll go over it one more time. I start off with a cleanser, and then I went in with this hydration tonic by Ueda. I moved into the Paula's Choice Triple Active Total Repair Serum. Um, and these are all PR. These are all gifted. No strings attached. They didn't ask me to do any reviews. That's just what I'm giving. And then I went in with the Retinol. And then I combined the Recovery Balm with the Bakucho Oil. And then we finished off with some lip balm. Okay? Okay. So let's catch up on chat and see who's been here, who's been running their fucking mouths. Um, I know how y'all are. Um, Sus is gonna join KKO. Um, Child wants to know what are we gonna talk about? What, let's do this. Okay. Okay. Is that good? Let's see. Okay. Um, what are we gonna talk about on the live stream today? I don't know. As as you guys know, I don't. I don't like plan what I'm gonna talk about during these lives. It is exactly. Um, what I say it is, it's, it's my office hours. And so the people in the audience who are viewing right now, you guys really do get to make the decisions in terms of what we're talking about. Um, so I don't know, child, what do you want to talk about? Um, Sus is here. Thank you. Um, what product do I usually buy? What I just showed you some products that I usually buy. Um, you guys want to play Among Us with Chill? Let's let's talk about. Oh hey T, hey welcome to the stream T. Long time no see. Um, Bobby Casino, my baby daddy's in the stream tonight. Thanks for joining. Um. Thea Mason, it's time to watch some memes. Let's go grow beauty to you, John. You found my TikTok? Great. Um, yeah, I'm not on TikTok all the time, but I do post on it when I have the opportunity just because I feel like it's something you have to do as a content creator. I'm not putting a lot of energy into it, um, but I am posting and I do get some occasional engagement really easily from TikTok, so... Um, if you want to message me about vocabulary and English on TikTok, feel free to do that, child. Okay? Um, let's talk about... Go okay, Ghostbuster wanted to play Among Us with me. I have really been into Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel the last few months. I'm, in, I'm playing a Harpy Lady deck, and it's really um can i say c-u-n-t on this on, on youtube see i'm not see i get worried about youtube because i can be really ratchet on twitch and um and twitter and i don't know how the girls are on youtube but anyway harpy ladies are just very like they're the it girls they're the it girls in Yu-Gi-Oh. um so I've been testing out that build, that deck. It's been so much fun. And I'm thinking I'm actually gonna start my gaming YouTube channel. And I think I'm gonna start with the Yu-Gi-Oh! And 
I'm not really going to go into it with all these ideas about like having consistency or, um, you know, playing certain games and having a schedule. No, this is just going to be very casual and just at my own leisure. I'm going to just post clips and post videos of my gameplays. You know, I'm playing Yu-Gi-Oh! right now, but I could be playing Valorant or Apex Legends some other time. So I'm just going to really play it by ear and make it a low pressure hobby instead of something that I'm trying to actively, you know, really make a living off of or make a lot of make a lot of coins from. I just want to share what I'm interested in. And I think there's a certain place for me to have this main channel, which is about growing my audience. Um, and then there's other places where I can just be very casual, very hobby-like, very like, no big deal. And so I think I am going to start my gaming channel pretty soon. I'm going to start uploading. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to start with some Harpy Lady gameplay on Yu-Gi-Oh. That's the tea. Um, when will I start my gaming YouTube video? Well, child, it's really going to depend on me getting the right content. So I'm testing out a Harpy Lady deck in Yu-Gi-Oh! And I want to get some good duels that really exemplifies what the Harpy Lady deck engine can do. And if I can show some different scenarios and some different plays, then I'll be really happy about showcasing some of those games on YouTube. And I'm going to just start there. Um, can I give birth? I cannot give birth, Squid. I'm a man, and men cannot give birth, Squid. Um, so, um, so yeah, that's kind of the tea there. Um, it's not going to be a schedule. I don't. I'm, I'm not putting that pressure on myself to do a lot of content. Um, you like Apex Legends? I'm a Maggie main. Maggie's my motherfucking bitch. Maggie, she eats. She eats. I love her ultimate so much. Um, what did I just say? Um, I said, I act, what are you talking about, Buster? What do you mean, what did I just say? I answered Squid's question. He said, can you give birth? I cannot give birth because I have a penis. And unless there's some new technology out there about penises being able to give birth, that would be news to me. So I... That's that. That's just me answering the question. Um, have I been in a relationship with someone before? Yes, plenty of times. Plenty of times. Do you need some advice on relationships? I can give. I used to have a. Um, I used to have a relationship podcast that was pretty successful. It ended up having to be closed and shut down because my co-host had other priorities where she could not really commit to doing it long term. And really, to be completely honest with you, I really only joined her to um, help her accomplish it. And, you know, it was something it was her baby. It wasn't really my baby. Um, and so when she um, conveyed um, some feelings or sentiments about quitting, I was just like, that's fine. Like, I'm not going to force you to continue doing something that you don't want to do. Um, you got timed out from another stream, Mason? What's, what's the tea? What, would you, what were you fucking doing, Mason, that got you timed out? And now you're running back over here. Now you running back. Now you scurrying back over here. Who were you just cheating on me with? You just clocked yourself. Who were you cheating on me with? And why are they not as good as I am? Because I don't time the girls out. I only time. Listen. In terms of my moderating. 
Um, I don't, I don't really try to moderate, if that makes sense. There's only two, okay, there's three reasons why I would punish a viewer in this stream. Number one, spam. You're not going to fucking spam my channel. And the reason why spam is so bad is because everything's not about you. Everything's not about you. Okay? So, um, spamming the channel really diverts attention away from quality content, not just for me, but for everyone else in the channel at the time. So, spammers will be removed very quickly. Don't fucking try me. Number two... Uh, while I'm a big free speech guy, I don't care about people using slurs or really bad language. Um, like I, I, mean, I care, but like I don't really care that much because whatever. But while I don't care about stuff like that, guys, I don't want to get in trouble for the rules of YouTube. So if you say really, really bad words that can get me in trouble, that's where I have a problem. So... You know, we told the line here with some of the bad language that we use. But if I ask you to not use certain words, it's not because I don't think you should use them. It's because I don't want to get my ass in trouble. Go use that shit on your platform. I'll come to your stream and you can say whatever the fuck you want to say. Um, but I don't want to get I don't want to get in trouble in YouTube, basically. And the third reason why I may I may moderate or time someone out is because Maybe you are arguing with someone and it's distracting from the quality of content for other people. I don't mind a little big green back and forth. I don't mind making fun of each other, stuff like that, whatever. But if it drags out to a point where it's not funny and not productive, then shut the fuck up. Um, so those are like the three... Those are the three ways you can get banned slash timed out, you know, typically. Um, um, but yeah, Jake the Third, I do want to hear a joke. You weren't doing anything, Mason? You just got timed out? That sucks. You quattro dog dare me. We doing quattro? Four? Not even a double. You went straight to the quattro. Quattro dog dare you? Give us the joke, Jake the Third. What's the joke? You got timed out by the owner. So Buster, so Ghostbuster, I wanna I wanna know, do you really play Apex Legends? Cause if you do play Apex Legends, who who's your legend that you that you ride or die for? I wanna know. What did I do on Thursday? What did I do on Thursday? I went to work on Thursday. It was actually a really boring day Thursday. Well, I shouldn't say boring because um, I don't get bored. I'm an adult. I don't get bored. Um, that's a whole other conversation. If you're an adult and you pay for, if you pay bills and shit, you have a mortgage and shit, boredom is not something that you should be experiencing ever. Like, that's not a real thing for adults. Like for real adults with responsibilities, Boredom is the another word for procrastination, okay? Don't be bored. Go do something. There's a bill you got to pay, a child you have to feed. There's something you could be doing. Boredom is not one of those things as an adult. So I don't get bored. But mundane is something that, you know, adults experience all the time. Thursday was very mundane. I woke up around 10 o'clock. Um, I've been waking up late because I've been going to bed late. Usually I wake up at nine and I get out of bed at 10. These days I've been waking up a little bit before 10 and getting out of bed around 1030, maybe 11. So I've been waking up super duper late. Then I went to work. Work was very mundane. 
drama free, care free. It was fine. Um, I came home. Oh no, Thursday. I lied. I got my days confused. I completely lied. No, I, I'm thinking you asked about Tuesday. You asked about Thursday. Thursday, I didn't go to work. I scheduled that day off because I taught a cooking class. I taught a cooking class at this, um, I'm a part of this like community program that does a lot of cooking courses and education. And so Thursday, I woke up at 10, got out of bed at 11. I went to the grocery store. I finished my scripting for the lesson. I taught people um, six myths about canned foods. And the program coordinator for the meal that I prepared, for the dish that I prepared, she wanted me to focus on foods that people would commonly get from the food pantry. And I chose canned carrots. Um, you know, if you've been to a food pantry before, I've been to a food pantry before, um, you know that there's a lot of canned foods that are given away typically. And so... The idea is to really educate people on the different types of dishes they can create using foods from food pantries. And so that's why I chose canned carrots as my dish to, 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 revolve, or to revolve my recipe around this one item, canned carrots. I ended up making a coconut curry carrot soup. <laughs> Fucking incredible. Knocked it out of the park. It is so easy to make. I will be making it. I'll be publishing the recipe on my Patreon for those that want to have specific ingredient um, amounts for themselves. But it's incredibly easy. It's just canned carrots, butter, onion, um, curry powder, um, coconut milk, and then a stock of your of your your choice, either chicken stock, bone broth whatever you want. I like to also add a little bit of um, dark beer, like a stout, into my um, soups. Don't ask me why. I think it's a great depth of flavor, um, dark beer and soups. Um, but yeah, you just cook everything down really well, and then you blend that shit in a blender, and your ninja. I love ninja. Um, and it was fantastic. The class loved it. Everyone wanted extras and seconds and thirds, and they wanted the recipe right immediately, right then and there. It was so wonderful. What a great experience. Um, Ayo, what time I go to sleep? I go to, okay, Ayo. Okay. Don't judge me, Io, but I usually go to bed anytime between 2 and 4 o'clock. In a couple days, the last couple weeks, it's been 5 o'clock in the morning. I know. I'm a gamer. What can I say? I'm a night owl. What can I say? What can I say? Sometimes it's 2, sometimes it's 5. I don't know. But I never go to bed early. It's not for me. And I don't have to wake up early. Like, I can wake up at 10 o'clock, and I'm still fucking early. Like, if, if, if it's a day that I have to go into the restaurant, I don't have to be at the restaurant until 1 o'clock. Like, 1 p.m. So, I, ha I can go to bed late and wake up fucking late. Like, and I love that about my life. I love it. Um, Ghostbuster says, um, you play Apex Legends with your friends, but he carries you because you're kind of bad. But you're kind of good and kind of bad at the same time. Make it make sense. Um, I do stay up late every day for the most part. I do. Bye, Mason. Um, hey, Kai. How are you today? Oh, good question. So, Sus has a question. He says, how do you clean dust out of your PC? I prefer... The can with like the spray, I mean the long handle, and you spray like it's you spray air basically. And you can just open up your PC. Um, I don't, I'm not gonna show you now, but basically, you take the glass off the side. I don't know what type of PC you have. I have a very like bougie PC. Um, 
but you just take the glass off the side very carefully. You take that spray, and it's, you're just spraying air. And you, you push the nozzle, and it, it moves all the dust out of there. It, it kicks the dust out of your PC. I like to do that really once every three months. I don't do it often. You should do it maybe once a month, but I do it every three months. It's like a quarterly thing that I do. Um, every four months I might do it. Um, so I don't do it very often. Um, maybe you should, but I don't know. I don't do it. Like my shit's dusty right now. Yeah, my shit's dusty right now. So while I'm sitting here preaching to you, it's really great for keyboards too. So, um, oh my God, I need to do my keyboard. Oh my God, guys, I'm such a fucking slob. Look how gross I am. So it's good for keyboards as well. Um, really good for keyboards, especially keyboards. Okay, I need to, I need to go fucking clean. I need to clean my shit. Thanks for the question because it's a good reminder that I need to clean my shit. Um, Cho, when we be mean to people, why are they being mean to us back? Um, <laughs> listen, <laughs> that's a funny question, Chow, because. That's something I have to work on myself. When someone's mean to me, I mean right back. Like, you just gave me an excuse to be mean back? Absolutely, I'm gonna be mean. Yes, absolutely. I think people are mean back to others that are mean to them first because it feels good. It feels good to dish out retribution. If someone hurts your feelings, it feels good to hurt their feelings to make them feel the way that you feel that feels like a sense of justice. Now, whether it's justice or not is up for debate. But I think it's a natural um, desire to want to get back at people because it's it's like your own version of dealing out justice and feeling like you were justified and not deserving the treatment that you initially received from that person. So that's why I think we're mean to people that are mean to us first. You just got home from work, Kai. Nice. Hopefully you had a good shift. How's work going for you, by the way? What's going on with work? Is work stressful? Are they being accommodating when it comes to your education? And you, you're always juggling a lot of things. So hopefully the job is, um, is being generous and understanding when it comes to your other obligations. Um, were you really glad when I see you on TikTok? Yes, I was very happy when you saw me on TikTok. Um, guess how old me and Io and Keiko so, so I think that you guys are 13. I'm going to say all three of you are 13 or 14. What do I think about the human bones? I don't think anything about the human bones. I don't think about human bones. Um... When you block people on live stream, are you being mean? No, because this is my shit. I could never be mean in my in my channel. I'm never mean. I'm very nice and very generous. Not me. I'm never mean. You have four hours PTO. Okay. Is that left or is that just starting? Because, like, we're still in January. I was right. So what grade is 13? Is that like... Oh, you guys are middle schoolers. Oh, fuck. Y'all are demons. Y'all are fucking demons. 13 middle schoolers? Demons. Because I know I was. At, the, at that age, in middle school, I was a demon too. Child says, I'm 90 years old. Girl, bye. <laughs> Not 90. <laughs> seventh grader? Okay. So that's middle school, right? Yeah, because seventh and eighth grade is middle school, and then ninth grade is 
high school, like your freshman year, right? 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah. So middle school. I was right. I just went to my friend's son's 11th birthday party. It was so much fun. She's such a good cook. She made salmon with brown sugar and ginger and lemon. It was so, 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 so good. Um, I'm really hungry too, y'all. To be quite frank, tonight's dream may be cut short because I'm really hungry. I have been going through things today. Um, what time do I sleep? I usually sleep anywhere between 2 and 5. That's when I go to sleep. I go to bed between 2 and 5 o'clock. No, I'm not going to say 5 o'clock. I'm going to say 2 and 4 o'clock. The 5 o'clock has been a very um, irregular thing. That does not happen very often. But typically, it's between 2 and 4 o'clock that I go to bed to sleep. Um, Io is an 8th grader. Nice. Um, but yeah, so today was a really weird situation. Um, I woke up, I, I, volu I volunteer every Saturday at, um, a community luncheon program. We basically cook food for whoever needs food. So it's not necessarily for the homeless or the poor. Um, because we have regular people come by. We don't ID. We don't do any of that shit. We, we just cook. We provide a service. And we feed bitches, you know? So, and it's a great thing. It's a great community. Like, I love the people that I work with every Saturday. Um, they are the most lovely, generous, caring people ever. And um, so I wake up, I go there, and I just had a headache all day. I've had a headache on and off all day long. I've taken four Tylenol in total today. And I'm feeling great now. But when I don't, when, when I, um, when I have headaches, I don't eat, which is not a good thing. Um, but I tend to not eat. I tend to not have an appetite and I've only had a little bit of broccoli and I've had coconut curry carrot soup. That's all I've had today. I haven't had anything else. So I feel like I need to really go downstairs and eat eat a legitimate meal before I lay my fucking ass down tonight. Like, cause like, I, like my stomach is like rumbling a little bit. I don't know. I need, I need to eat something. So I don't think we're going to be up super late tonight. My apologies, but I have been sick today and I almost canceled the stream. I almost canceled the stream, but I showed up. I showed up. Listen, I showed up. And I'm trying to remind myself, Joe, just show up, you know? So, um, anyway, what questions do we have? What do you guys want to talk about today um, before I end the stream? Like, what topics are you into? Um, what questions do you have about finances or personal um, nutrition, working out, what you know, what do you guys want to talk about? Oh, hey, Kendra. Welcome to the stream. You're never late. You're always on time. Don't worry about it. Are you? Are you in, um, are you visiting with your mom right now? Are you still out of town? Or did you get back home? What's going on, Kendra? But yeah, let's talk about whatever you guys want to talk about. Um, skincare, finances, you know, on my Instagram. And I, you know what? You know what we're going to talk about? If you guys don't have shit to say, I want to talk to you guys about ally. Not allies of skin, but ally banking. Okay. So I'm going to put in, oh, that's so wonderful. I'm happy that you're there, Kendra. I'm going to put in here a referral link. Oh, that, that link is ugly as fuck.
Okay, we want that link instead because the fuck? Okay, there is a link to, it's a referral link, not an affiliate link, but it's an opportunity that I just got through one of my banks um, and they specialize in savings accounts, okay? Um, click the link, check them out. I feel like now is the best opportunity to switch banks if you are attempting to save money, okay? Um, and the reason why is because their interest rates fucking highest in the country, top 0.1% of the country. They are, they currently have a 4.35% annual percentage yield on all balances. It doesn't cost anything to have an account with Ally. Um, there's no minimum balances required to open up an Ally bank account. You can put one fucking dollar in that big account and be done. Um, so definitely check it out. It's really easy to enroll. It is an online bank. So my recommendation is if you handle a lot of cash, you may want to have a bank that gives you more ATM access. Okay. Because that's a way to deposit your money um, and whatnot. It is difficult to, to deposit cash with online banks um so you know that's that's a difficult thing however if you have a traditional bank you're making zero dollars on the money that you're letting this bank borrow which is bullshit okay so i highly recommend that you put your savings account into an online bank the reason why online banks are able to give such highly competitive interest rates to their consumers is because compare a traditional bank to an online bank. What's the biggest difference? I'll tell you, the traditional bank has a shit ton of real estate. They have a large real estate footprint. They have buildings all over the place. And with those buildings comes costs. Not only do you have to pay the mortgage or the rent for those buildings, but then you have to also pay for the employees to clean, to service, and to provide services to those buildings. So that's a lot of costs that they cannot afford to give back to their consumers. Alternatively, an online bank may have, fuck, one building that they operate out of. They may have one building that they operate out of. And that allows them a lot of free capital to return to their consumers. So a bank like Chase is going to offer you 0.001% annual yield, annual yield return on your money, whereas Ally is going to give you 4.35%. That's fucking crazy, okay? Um, also, with that offer, by the way, I think you can earn up to $125 for free, okay, for free. You just enroll into the account, you deposit your funds, you keep the funds there, and then after a while, you'll get your $125 bonus for signing up with them. So I definitely recommend that you, I hope you guys cannot hear my stomach growling. That's so embarrassing, like, <sighs> embarrassing. Um, but I definitely recommend that you um, check them out at least look into them. This has been one of the ways that I have been able to really reach financial security in, in times past because the way their savings accounts are set up are very, very intuitive and user-friendly. They have these buckets where you can have different savings buckets depending on your savings goals. So let's say that you wanna save up for a car. Well, you can have one bucket within one whole account, by the way, um, that's specifically for saving up for your car. And then you have another bucket that you're saving up for a mortgage or another bucket where you're saving up for a vacation. And you just have all these different buckets that are all gaining a lot of interest back every month. By the way, they pay you interest and it's all within one account. It is just the most user friendly experience I've ever had in terms of a banking, a banking service. And 
The good thing about their customer service is that they're always on demand because they're online. They always have a customer service rep ready to help you via chat, via phone. They're just wonderful. I never had any issues with them. Um, so anyway, um, yes, definitely check it out. I'll post the link again. There's my referral link. Check Ally Bank out. They are great. Um, with all, like, let me be transparent. I also, so let me be transparent. I'll break it down. I'll break it down. I have three banks, okay? I have a bank with American Express. I have a checking account with them, and I have a savings account. Their savings account is online, so they give competitive interest rates as well. But the reason I got into um, American Express is because their checking account allows you to gain um, American Express rewards points. And I'm a big American Express fan. I have all, I have, I have like a bunch of credit cards with them. And so it just helps me to get more um, points through using my checking account. So that's great. Using my debit card, I get points. So that's nice. I also have a bank with Bluevine. Bluevine is my business banking account. It's just a checking account with a debit card. I have checks and I just pay my bills um, through that checking account, through the business checking account. So I pay things like my phone bill, things like um, um, my internet, um, things like um, Adobe Premiere, um, what is it called? Adobe Premiere Pro, I couldn't think of the Pro part. I pay for, you know, different software out of my Blue Vine checking account. And then the bulk of my savings goals, so if I have like little goals that I'm trying to save for, they all go through Ally. So, you know, I keep my, um, I keep my um, $1,000 in my um, Amex checking um, that helps me in to handle any like emergency, um, a small emergency. Um, and then I keep like my major emergency funds in allies and my saving goals in allies. So that's kind of like the rundown of all my banking TMI, but here we are. Um, Sorry you weren't feeling well. This time of the year is terrible. It's never ending. I just had a headache. So, I mean, it is what it is. Didn't realize this account showed my name. My bad. Oh. Do I see any subscription if people subscribe? I don't see subscriptions. I don't. Um... I'm sure I could add some things to the live stream so that people are notified when they subscribe. I don't know. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll maybe I'll look into that now that I'm streaming a lot more often and this is like a more regular thing. Yes, Kendra, the bucket idea is great. It's very um, organized. I recommend you check it out, Kendra. Click that link. Look into them. Who do you who do you bank with, Kendra? If you don't mind me asking. You have a curious question? Ask away, Chow. What's your question? This is um, office hours with Chow. So it's all about questions. You're with USAA. I hear they're pretty good. I hear they're pretty good, actually. But I don't think that USAA is going to give you the savings rate that Ally is going to give you. You know, Ally is at least trying to keep up with the rate of inflation. Hey, Ben W, how are you? Froggy, aka Froggy. Um, welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing well. I love your new profile picture on Instagram, by the way. Uh. That's so cute. Um, oh my God, it's so funny that Ben's even here, that Froggy's even here, because a long time ago, I tried to get um, Froggy into using Ally, and like for whatever reason, 
like it just did not work out. <laughs> there were some tech difficulties. Well, I can tell you, Kendra, it's not 4.35. I can tell you that much. So if I may, if I may shield for a second with Sephora Cold, because this is a this is a good way for you to make a quick 125 bucks. Okay. You could use you could <laughs> child that question is crazy child that is a crazy fucking question what do you mean what if you don't have bones what do you think what do you mean what do i think we have bones <laughs> we're not jellyfish honey <laughs> we're not jellyfish um But what I'm recommending to you, Kendra, is that you keep USAA as your checking account. You keep your checking account there so that if you do get cash, it's whatever. If you get paid, you know, you know, you put your, your, your checks into USAA checking account. You pay your bills through USAA checking account. But when it comes to your savings goals, you transfer your money from your checking account, whatever you're able to save. Whatever you're able to save, you take that money, you put it into your Ally saving account, and then it's going to build more money over time because of that high interest rate. 4.35 is no fucking joke. So it's going to start to pay you um, a significant amount of money um, the more you save. So that's what I recommend. Um, uh, doing well. Thank you. We celebrated our one year anniversary today. That's awesome. Congratulations to you too. I'm so happy. I feel like you guys have been dating for 10 years. It feels like you guys have been dating for 10 years, like 84 years. Oh my God. My hair is, I need a fucking haircut. <gasps> I need to book an appointment for Friday. I, listen, 4.35, I'm telling you, you got to get with the winning team. Uh, Ally is where the girls are winning. Like, Kendra says, why can't I see Chow's comments? I don't know why I can't see Chow's comments. But he asked me, what if you don't have bones? What do you think? What do you mean? Bitch, I wouldn't be living. If I didn't have bones, I'd be dead. The house. Um, but you know, your bank is 0.75. That's actually a lot. Are you with a credit union, Froggy? Mm. Kai, I love you, love you, love you, love you, love you forever. Good luck with your homework. Um, don't stay up too late and get some sleep tonight. Are you with a credit union? Because 0.75 is very high. Okay. So, so don't feel too bad, Froggy, because 0.75 is very high for a traditional brick and mortar bank. That's very competitive. So, like, it's not a lot compared to an online bank, but it's still a lot compared to, like, a Chase bank, which is giving the girls 0.01%. You know, it's giving, yeah, yeah. Credit unions usually give competitive interest rates. They do. Yeah, they do. Now, on the flip side, credit unions can sometimes charge higher interest rates for loans. So, I mean, that's how they kind of make their money back. They charge a high interest rate but they give you back a higher interest rate than regular banks. And they also tend to be more willing to give out loans, even to those that are not fully credit worthy. So there's a lot more flexibility with banks because you have more of a relationship with them. Um, so yeah. Oh, yes, 0.01% is what the girls typically used to give. It may be a little bit higher now, but it's not 0.75, I can tell you that much. It's not point Chase is at Chase is not at point seven five. Fifth third, not at point seven five. PNC and not at point seven five. 
the traditional girls are nowhere near 0.75. And they're definitely not 4.35. Girl, listen. I'm what I tell you. USAA at 0 0.05, I'm telling you. Tell, and that's and that is high for traditional banks. And it's only high because of um, the inflation right now and what the government's doing with interest rates. They have inflated them to counteract the inflation with consumer goods. So, yeah, um, 0 0.05 is high for traditional banks. That's 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 very high for them. But I like, I've been getting 4.35 for years, honey. It's been that's nothing to me. Um, so 0.75 is pretty good, Froggy. That is really good for, for a traditional bank. Um, if you block people comments on live stream for no reason, are you being mean? Um, anytime I block people's comments on my live stream, it's for a reason. Where is Kendra and Kai on live stream? Um, you can't see them, child? I don't know. Girl, I don't know what you got going on, child, but yeah, I don't, I don't know, I don't, I don't know why you can't see them. Refresh the page. That's all I can tell you. So yeah, Kendra, what I'm, what I'm recommending you do, get your finances together in year in the year 2024. Get a better savings account. Get a better savings account. And this might be your sign to get one. You get that $125, get the deposit into your savings account. Hell, you can just put put 500 in the account. Put 100 in the account. Leave that there. Collect your 125 and move that shit back to your regular bank. But I don't think you're going to do that. I think you're going to I think you're going to really love the services and the quality of the Ally banking system. I think you will. I got to go to bed. Have a good night, Cho. Have a good night, Frogging. Thank you for stopping by. I don't know if you blocked them. Maybe you did block them by accident, child. If you can't, if you can't see them, maybe you blocked them. And I have no idea how to unblock them. I have no idea. But apparently, Kendra could not see your comments. Well, so, so yeah, so seriously, Kendra, even if you don't use Ally, there are other banks out there um, that you can use. SoFi, S-O-F-I, is another, another really, really popular one that people are using online. I'm not affiliated with them. I don't use them, but I love Ally. I just think that when you are saving your money, you should... Put it in an account that can make a little bit of money. It's not keeping up with inflation, but you're not getting destroyed by inflation either. So I would really consider Ally or SoFi if I were you, Kendra, if you're even able to save a little bit right now, which you should make a habit of it. Like even if it's $5 a fucking month, you should be putting something away in your savings account. Something. Okay. It's really all about the habit. And not about the amount when you're trying to get out of a financial rut. It's about making the habit. So get into the habit of saving your money. Okay. Um, no, child, you're not being mean if you block people. You can do whatever the fuck you want to do. You can block everybody. Doesn't matter. Um... I need to work on paying off my debt ASAP before I can save anything, but I agree. I really need to save something. Well, do you have an emergency fund? Because what you don't want to... Okay, so let me, let's get into it, Kendra. Let's get into it. If you're trying to pay off your debt, you still need to have somewhat of an emergency fund. Now, you can you can go down the Dave Ramsey route and do $1,000, but you have children... So I would recommend that you save up a little bit more than a thousand. I would say two thousand. You got you got what? You got what? Three boys. I would save up two thousand dollars of an emergency fund, and these emergencies should be 
emergencies, okay? Like emergencies, not like, oh, I forgot to buy a gift. Let me go dip in there to get something for a gift. No, fuck that. That's not an emergency. I'm talking about like, you know, your car just broke down. You got to get a part to the car or, you know, there's a random visit to the doctor that you did not plan. You know, you got to pay for that out of pocket. Emergency. You lost your job. You, you know, emergencies. You know, after you save up the $2,000, attack your debt one credit card at a time. Okay? Pay the minimums on everything else. You attack one credit card at a time. Now, there is some science, some human behavioral science about whether you should do the snowball method or the avalanche method. The snowball method is when you start with the lowest um, debt that you owe. You, you attack that first, you pay that off, you go to the second amount. This helps you to build momentum, okay? And along the way, you're actually building up your confidence because you're, you're conquering one issue, you're completing things, and you can use that motivation to continue the process of paying off all of your debts. Um, alternatively, you can do the avalanche method, which tackles either the highest bill, highest debt, or the debt with the highest interest. Now, this is a much slower, arduous process, but mathematically, you're saving more money long term. However, research shows that people that do the snowball method are much more successful than those that do the avalanche method in terms of which group ends up getting rid of their debt. So I always recommend the snowball method, starting with the lowest, the lowest debt first and then working your way up until it snowballs into better, stronger momentum. Um, and then just pay the minimum from the other ones. And then in terms of your spending, try to spend your money on... Um, out of your checking account, like debit card only. Spend your money out of the money that you have. And then everything else you have left over tackles that one debt at a time. So that is my advice for getting out of um, debt. But you need to have that emergency fund of two, $1,000 to $2,000. You need to have that. And I think it needs to be in a high interest savings account so that it's making a little bit of money every month. Um, yeah, me and my dad, yes, at 45, my dad is helping me get my shit together straight. That's what we are doing, starting with the lowest and moving up. My boys are the reason I'm broke. Uh, Kendra, there is nothing wrong with your dad helping you at the age of 45. Nothing's, there's no shame in your game. Get your shit together. Um, and get it together quick so that you are able to not have to depend on your dad. And then you can buy him a vacation. I get that. I get that. But, and you know, this is going to sound a little rough. Might sound a little rough. But I know someone in my real life, a friend of mine, a dear friend, who spoils her son rotten. In my opinion. Spoils him rotten. She has a lot of financial um, liabilities these days. And she has a lot of financial responsibilities these days. And I don't think that... Based on the... I don't, know, I don't have all the facts. Okay? Mind you, I don't have all the facts. But... Based off what I have been told by her, it appears to be that she doesn't have a lot of money left over to save significantly to get herself out of financial ruts. And part of this is because she spoils her boy. Kendra, if your boys are not able to buy a new pair of tennis shoes every couple months, they're going to be fucking okay. Okay? If they're not able to keep up with the Joneses at school, they're going to survive. Okay? If you are not able to buy them video games... In the newest skins every other week. They're going to be fucking fine. They're not going to die. Okay. In fact. It is more harmful. In my opinion. 
It is more harmful for a mother to be financially insecure because it, it stops the, the good opportunities for that child, okay? So, for example, it may stop you from living in a better situation, you know, not being able to sacrifice momentarily to live in a, in a safe household for your, for your sons. That's not fucking, that's fucking dumb, okay? You know, it's not going to allow you to put your children in extracurricular activities so the way that you want them to. Maybe there's a trip that they want to go on with their, with their friends at school where well, you can't afford it. Because you have not sacrificed in the short term to be able to afford those things like that in the long term. So get your financial shit together, Kendra, because once you are financially secure, you'll be able to do 10 times more for your children. So that's kind of the point I want to say. It's like, I know that people, parents want to like provide for their kids. But you're really doing them a disservice if you are not financially secure yourself and you're not able to really provide for them in the way that you really want to. My mom being sick and me having to take all this unpaid time off of work on top of me being severely underpaid in my area and profession, it's getting done. I don't spoil my son, but I am guilty of being exhausted and ordering out too much. That's my biggest problem. Absolutely more harmful to give them everything they want. Absolutely. Well, Kendra, um, have you thought about meal prepping? It can be a little daunting to meal prep, but I have found that meal prepping helps to save time during the week, which sounds like something you are wanting to do. Um... And there's ways you can meal prep. Um, there's ways you can meal prep and still have variety. I cannot say your name. Um, you dated, you dated Duder. Hello, Stacy. Hello, how are we doing tonight? So yeah, I don't know. I mean, there's ways around that. I know that eating out is like a lot. I'm working on it. I'm blessed in the sense that my fiance makes good money and takes good care of all my boys. We don't combine our finances. May seem weird to some people, but just how we do it. I know. I get it. No, I totally get it. First of all, he's your fiance, not your husband. So I feel like at this point, it's a wise thing to not combine finances because there is no, there's no financial obligation to one another so i think it makes total sense for unmarried people to not combine their finances right now you're playing like financial you're playing you're playing roommates you're playing house um but i think it's totally fine that um that your finances are not combined and take advantage of that kendra like if he's supporting you um or you own house together now that's a little suspect, honey. That's because what if you break up? What if you break up? Then what happens then to the house? It gets really complicated then, doesn't it? But anyway, I mean, it, you made that decision twenty years ago, honey. You can't be undone now. Um, Stacy, I'm doing really well. I'm very hungry, so unfortunately, I'm not gonna be live, like. As long as I usually am, because I need to, I need to really go eat before I fucking pass out. Um, but I'm doing really well. It's been a really good week. I procrastinated a lot of things, yet I was able to make it out of this week alive. So that's good. Um, oh, that's Kendra. Listen, no judgment here, honey. Live your life. I'm here to help. I'm here to give advice. But regardless of whatever you, the fuck you got going on, I'm still going to support you. So, whatever. Um, but no, what I'm saying is I think you should really take advantage of your fiance being so helpful with the boys. And if you're able to stash away a little bit of extra money, do that. If you're able to um, pay off more bills, do that. Um, now, I have a... Let's get into it. 
let's get into it since we're talking about it. How long have y'all been engaged? And do you actually foresee marriage in this relationship? Since we just putting it on, since we just putting it out there. Orion Gillette says, or Orion Gillette says, what's your favorite color? I have three favorite colors. Okay, I have three favorite colors. First favorite color, purple. Second, green. Third, orange. Those are my three favorite colors. If you had to put a gun to my head, I would say purple is my favorite color. I would say purple is my favorite color, but I love those other two colors as well. I love green because I love money, and I love orange because it's like the less intense version of red. Um, still passionate, still loving, but just not as intense as red. So I love I love orange. Kendra, I just know you're typing. I know you're typing up a storm right now. I know you're typing, honey. I feel it. Honey, I know you're typing. <laughs> I know Kendra's like, let me, let me, let me spill the tea, honey. Let me spill the tea. Okay, you guys have been engaged. Engaged 11 years? Girl, y'all are playing games. Y'all playing games. At this point, just go to the courthouse and get it done. Get it done. Just go to the courthouse and get it done. No big deal. It doesn't change. Well, it does. Okay, it does change a lot, financially speaking. There's a lot more, um, um, I mean, you're, once you're married, you're in it together. Um, that's a good thing. It's a good thing. Um, because divorce is so hard to do. Um, but, if this is, but this is really interesting, though. I want to know more. I want to know more. As someone that used to have a relationship podcast, I want to know more about this relationship. Um, because there has to be a reason why um, you guys have not gone to the courthouse yet. There has to be a reason. And it's not just like, oh, we're too busy. Like, there has to be some subconscious reasons why. And they don't have to be bad reasons. They're not bad reasons. And they're not good reasons. But I think there's, I think there's definitely reasons. Um, do you feel like your partner is one of those men who believes currently that Marriage is not advantageous for guys. And in a lot of ways, it's not. In terms of in terms of divorce, divorce is very lopsided towards in the favor of women. But I think marriage is a great thing for both males and females. I think it's great for both. Divorce, however, is not good for men. Um, I'm back. Sus said, guys, rate the Riz. What Riz? I can't see the... I Listen, I learned what Riz was like six months ago. Um, because I work at a restaurant, and so I work with teenagers as well. They work part-time. And they were using this word Riz. I was like, what is Riz? Like, what, what language are you guys talking? And they told me that it's like having swagger. Like having swag or charm or like being able to get like, you know, like having riz, you know, like a little riz, you know, like, is it rizzy? Is it giving riz or not? You know? So I felt very Gen Z. I felt very like Zillennial. I felt very like informed. I know what riz is. I can use it in a sentence. I'm mastering the English language. It's probably going to be in the dictionary by, you know, 2025. Um... But that's funny. Well, overall, Kendra, I just want to say that um, you need to have a method to the madness when it comes to your finances. I want you to get 
an Excel sheet and write down every reoccurring expense that you have. Write down the bills. Get on a budget. Those things are really helpful at reducing your debt because when you're just spending money willy-nilly, it's easy to, you know, buy a lot to here, buy an event there, buy dinner there. But you will find that once you're more aware of where your money is going, you're then able to tackle it in a better, more efficient way. No, it's me. I may have trust issues and a tiny bit of fear of real commitment. Maybe if I had to guess subconsciously, that's likely what's going on. Maybe. That could be it. And you're not alone. A lot of people feel that way. A lot of people have trust issues um, and fear of commitment. And that is real commitment. Being engaged is one thing. Being married is a totally different other thing. Totally different other thing. And, you know, think, so if spending is an issue for you, Kendra, you then have that. So step one is evaluating what's the issue. Okay. It's the spending. Step two, evaluate the behavior around the issue. So why are you spending that's the next question you need to really dive in deep with, Kendra, is figure out why am I spending? Why um, do you spend money when you're depressed? Do you spend money when you're bored? Do you spend money when you're sad or angry? Um, you need to evaluate what, what's triggering the spending. Do you spend because you just have very little impulse control? You know, there are different strategies you can utilize to combat each of those issues. And so you need to just figure out why you're spending. I feel you, Kendra. He's here to stay. Good for him. I'm glad that he's standing by you. Does he have children? Is, is he the father of your child? And did, were you in a previous relationship that really broke down your ability to trust? And that's why you have trust issues. That's the only assumption I could make. We're getting the tea on Kendra tonight, y'all. So you're the problem. Basically, you're the problem. Um, I mean, and to be honest, if you married this guy and then combined your finances, I thought you'd be able to tackle your financial security a lot better. Because two people working together is better than two people working separately. That's just the truth. That's just the truth. Two people on one accord, on the same page of the same book, in the same volume of the book, when they work together, um, they, they, people tend, teams tend to be more efficient and productive. Gotcha. Okay. So you guys have a you guys have a child together. So you know what? It's even more reason to get married. It's even more reason to get married um, because you have a child together. Um, and you're raising your youngest together and that provides protection for for the child, you know. Well, he contributes to some problems, money being one of them. Our money is separate because it's literally the only thing we fight about. Well, that's a... Now, listen. I know you're qualifying that by saying it's the only thing you guys fight about. But money is the only thing people usually get divorced over and break up over. Um, I know people think it's cheating and all that other shit. But most divorces are over, over money. 
most breakups are over money, like long-term relationships. I'm not talking about some guy you just fucked two weeks ago and now you're dating for a month and now you're breaking up. No, no, no. I'm talking about long-term committed relationships. Money is consistently the root of relational issues um, in within couples. So that's something you guys need to really work on. Like, really work on that. And I think that just having open communication is the first step. Like saying, hey, you know, what is your approach and why is your approach that way? And, and, and ask that question from a place of genuine curiosity. You know, why do you spend money the way you spend money? Um, what is your game plan on tackling our financial issues? And why do you think that will work well? Um, you know, approaching it from a place of curiosity instead of judgment is the best way when it comes to discussing those hard issues with money, in my opinion. Um, CC Box says, hello. Hello, CC Box. How are you? Welcome to Cho's Office Hours. This is an opportunity to ask me whatever questions you have on your mind, whether it's about skincare, whether it's about finances, um, working out, nutrition, um, random fucking drama, whatever you want. So welcome to the stream. Um, I'm not going to be on long though because I'm starving. I'm really hungry and I need to go find something to eat. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let's. Yeah, we'll, we'll stop there, Kendra. We can talk about this stuff privately. All your shit on Front Street right now. Um, <laughs> um, guys, I'm actually going to end the stream early. I'm so sorry that we're ending so early. But you guys have been listening to my stomach growl for the last hour. And we've been here for an hour and a half. So I, think, I feel like that's, that's good. An hour and a half is a good live stream. Um... I'm here every Saturday at 11.30 um, p.m. Eastern Time. Um, look out for my gaming channel to come out soon. I'll let the girls know about that soon. And then also I might be starting Monday streams too in the near future. So maybe sometime in February I'll be starting some, some Monday streams. No, that was all good, Kendra. I feel like that's a good... Like, what I was talking to you about, Kendra, is something of value that anyone can take from. I think that there's, you you are not the only person in this situation, okay? You aren't the only person having financial issues or having relationship issues. You, you are not alone. You're not unique in that aspect, okay? Um, I know everyone thinks that they're like, I'm the only one going through this. And oh my God, and how could I? And nobody understands. Listen, everyone has money issues. I have fucking money issues. So, like, I'm one to talk. Like, I'm on a plan right now that's working for me. And I'm, I'm reducing my debt by a lot based off of the plan I'm using. So, you know, I feel like discussing our issues is always a really good thing. And there's always someone out there watching or listening that can derive some sort or some modicum of value from it. So, thank you, Kendra, for being open and honest. Um... I appreciate that. I That takes a lot of courage, first of all. Um, but I think it was really helpful to people that may, uh, may have been here or may watch this in the replay. So I want to get going, guys. Um, again, stay on the lookout for my gaming YouTube channel to debut pretty soon. Um, I might start doing Monday streams. You guys already voted. If you have not voted on Patreon, go vote on Patreon. It's a poll. Vote on Patreon. Um... Yeah, I might, I might start doing Monday streams. A lot of shit going on in the skincare community that I want to talk about. So, um, anyway, guys, I'm, I'm going to go. Have a good night.